this morning is the morning of the Saucony London 10K. Saucony London 10K, Saucony London 10K, Saucony London 10K London. London, you are incredible. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's video. My name is Matt, and this is what matters to Matt. And on today's video, that's right, we're going to be talking all about my experience at the Saucony London 10K. And right off the bat, before we dive into this, you know, that, that race happened a few weeks ago now, and I have really been struggling with trying to figure out exactly how I was going to put a video together. As usual, after I come out of a race, first thing I tend to do, and some people on my channel have uh, not criticized for me, but maybe told me I'm a little bit too hard on myself, I look at the things maybe I could have done better. And I just want to say that when I do that in a lot of my videos, um, I'm, I'm always, always focusing on being happy with where I'm at, whether that's with work, whether that's with family, whether that's with my own mental or physical health. But always wanting to push push myself the best I can and push myself forward and get the best out of me. And oftentimes, oftentimes that requires me to maybe look a little bit less at some of the things that I should be celebrating and more at some of the things I could do slightly different. So yes, yes, the title of this video will probably end up being how not to PR the Saucony London 10K. But a lot of this video is about celebrating just, just how incredible that whole weekend was and how incredible that race was. So it's going to sound a little bit negative at times, but it's mostly about me just able to get it done and achieve my goal, even though I didn't necessarily put myself in the best position. I don't know if any of that makes any sense whatsoever. This video is going to be a little bit off the cuff. But we're going to go down through the week leading up to the 10K, the 10K itself, and ultimately, what are my plans now that that's done and over and we're looking ahead to a fall marathon? So I guess we might as well start with why did I choose the Saucony London 10K? Why did I choose to travel all the way from Canada to London to actually run this race? Now, if you are somebody who has never run a world major or you're somebody who has run a world major marathon and you're looking for maybe a similar experience at a shorter distance where you don't have to run that 42.2, the London 10K might be might be the opportunity to do that. You're only running 10 kilometers and it has just a little bit something extra to it. There were 18,000 or so runners in this race and it felt it felt different. It felt a little bit special to be running through the streets of London. Now, if I'm going to be honest, one of the main reasons why I chose to sign up for this race originally was that my wife and family were planning to go visit her family over in France for a couple of weeks. And this race happened to fall right in the middle of that. I had never been to London. I thought it would be a good experience for me. And also the original plan was that I was gonna sign up and run this race with my daughter. Previously last year, we had run a race in Toronto where she did 53 minutes and some odd seconds for the 10K. And we were really hoping to break that 50 minute barrier. And I was hoping to pace her to that. We found out after I signed up for this race that you have to be 16 and she's only 13. So she wasn't able to do that. Now she is going to be running a 10K in a couple months here that she's training hard for now. Unfortunately, at that same time, I'm going to be running that same race, but I'll be running the marathon. So I won't be able to run that exactly with her either, but, but we still went and got the job done in London, or at least I did. She stayed in France with family. It's just 10K. It's just 10K. So I have no idea what the plan is for today. So let's talk about goals first. Now, my goal for this race, towards the first of the year, I put out a video of what my goals were for all of 2024, and I said in that video that I wanted to run PRs in the 5K, 10K, half marathon, and marathon. Now, 
I am more of a distance runner, at least traditionally that's what I've trained for. I've done a few marathons now and a couple of half marathons, but I never really pushed myself in an official 5K or 10K. So the only other 10K, the official one that I had actually run was the 10K that I did with my daughter that I mentioned earlier, where we ran 53 minutes. So the, the time that I was actually using, the benchmark that I was using for this goal, for this PR, was actually what I did during a half marathon time trial that was registered to Strava as my fastest 10K. And that was around the 44 and a half minute mark. First day running through the country in France, first day running in France. The week leading up to the race. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we were in France for the week before we actually headed over to London. And at that time, I was already starting to think about marathon prep for the fall. So I didn't really have any structured taper or anything for this 10K, but I also didn't have anything really focused in terms of training at all. The most important thing about this trip was to visit family, was to spend that time with the family and enjoy our time in France and enjoy our time in London. So training, running, lifting, all that stuff took a little bit of a backseat. So I never really had a solid plan or any solid structure. I remember getting out for a couple of runs in France where they were just meant to be easy runs, ended up running more hills than I thought France actually even had. And I also remember just running a couple of easier runs that week with no real pace, no real turnover. So unlike a proper taper for any race distance I would do in the past where normally I might decrease the volume, but I also want to keep some of the intensity up in my legs so I could get that quick turnover. I never really did any of that leading up to this race. And, and it did leave with some question marks in terms of how it's going to feel actually coming come on race morning. So training, taper, all that stuff wasn't really a solid plan. wasn't really any plan at all, but we were able to get it done on race day that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. But it did leave me with a lot of question marks on just how I was going to be able to perform on race day. It was a little bit of an unknown. Now added to that, most nights we were going to bed pretty late and I wasn't getting a whole lot of sleep. And normally what I would say coming into a race is maybe that night before, if you don't get a whole lot of sleep, that's okay. But you really want to focus on the night before that. And even the entire week before that, making sure that you're getting some quality sleep. I wasn't getting that. And I felt by the end of the week and in the weekend and into the shakeout run that we're going to talk about here in a sec, that I could really start to feel sort of some of that tiredness uh, coming up in my body. And what it really translated into was that whenever I went out for an easy run during that week, later in the week, even during the shakeout run, my heart rate and my pace and everything on paper was telling me that it was an easy run, but the effort level, the perceived effort, it, it felt really hard. And it's, it's really a, an odd experience to be that tired at the end of the week. And most of that just was from going to bed incredibly late. And most days having to wake up pretty early to, to get the day started because after all, again, we were, we were on vacation and we wanted to get, get as much time in with family as we could. And one more excuse to throw at you before we start talking about the shakeout run was my diet was a complete flip to what I had been eating before we went over to France. Now, I've mentioned in other videos, my wife's family loves to offer me up some authentic Asian food, loves to offer me up some authentic French food, and I love eating all the food. And a lot of that food, I had no idea what I was eating, but I ate it all anyway. So I, I could tell that I was maybe adding on a couple of extra pounds. I, I didn't really do any sort of a carb load. Not that I think you need to do a big carb load heading into a 10K, but I hadn't really been paying much attention to my diet at all. And that had my whole system sort of fighting back a little bit come race morning. Welcome, welcome to the official Softening London 10K Showdown. And so by the time we had got to London race weekend, it was pretty apparent that my body had been thrown for a little bit of a loop and I had picked up some sort of a cold. Now that was probably a combination of the sleep, the food, the travel, all of those things, but I had gotten a little bit sick and that was starting to rear its ugly head. We went out to a local store once we first hit London and I picked up quite a bit of cough medicine and I was sucking that back for the first couple of days we were there trying to beat that off before the race actually started. 
and come the day of the shakeout run the day before the race, I was still feeling a little bit under the weather and I wasn't quite sure how that was going to translate to race morning. But during the shakeout run, I actually felt pretty good. I hadn't run for a couple of days at that point. I really wasn't sure how my body was going to feel. And I was able to try out the Sockety Endorphin Speed 4s. Great shoe. I don't know why I don't have that shoe and this is not going to be a, a review video at all but a really, really good shoe. I also had the opportunity to meet a couple of uh, Instagram folks that, that I am just a huge fan of. So the whole Saucony Shakeout Run experience was, was incredible. It gave me a real sense that I was in London. It gave me a real sense that I was about to be running the big race. It did get rid of some of that anxiety and some of those nerves leading into the race. And it proved to me that, that I had some to offer race morning. I was able to pick up the pace a little bit during that Shakeout Run. I did feel like effort level was was a little bit hard relative to how fast I was going, but it still gave me some confidence that even with all those things stacked against me, there is potential that it that could be a good race. But there were still so many question marks about just, just how things are going to turn out Sunday morning during the race. Uh, this morning is the morning of the Saucony London 10K. So ultimately race morning I got up and I was not feeling very well and I downed some cough medicine we got out it was about a 15 minute walk to the race and we got there pretty early I wanted to leave myself with plenty of time I wanted to leave myself to look around I wanted to leave myself to just be able to get a lay of the land and, and figure things out because I knew it was going to be a, a fairly big race I was in Corral C, which was one of the earlier corrals, which meant I was supposed to get there fairly early. We did go out and get ourselves a coffee, a banana, and a couple of croissants. And then prior to the race, or right before the race started, I took a gel. But while I was actually on the race, just to kind of get nutrition out of the way, I didn't take on any water. I didn't take on any additional gels. I feel like if you're running anything under an hour, it's, it's not completely necessary. Now, it was a pretty warm day. And there were a couple of times that I thought maybe I would take on some water, but just just with the size of the crowds, it didn't seem that the benefits didn't didn't outweigh the cost of having to cut through the people to get over to the table to actually get the water. So no nutrition while I was actually running the race and, and no water either. So once you do get to the race, uh, London and Saucony both did a really, really good job at organizing this event. There are plenty of porta potties, plenty of volunteers there to show you exactly where to go. I had a couple of hours after I had gotten there to actually get into position and get into the corral. There's plenty of signage to tell you when that last porta potty was going to be before there wasn't going to be another one before your corral. And there were plenty of water stations actually even before you got to your starting pen to take a little sip if you needed to. And everything was just organized really, really well. And it, it gave you a certain comfort. It gets rid of some of that anxiety when things are well organized race morning, especially when there's a lot of people around. And you're not you're not worried too much about where you have to go the flow of traffic just works out really well and i felt they did a really really good job race morning okay so getting into the starting corral was probably one of those points where i started to feel just a little bit more nervous because it had occurred to me that the morning i said something that was maybe a little bit too was a little bit ridiculous to the camera i said that i was going to start out this race and in terms of pace i was going to go by feel we we're going to start out the race i was going to see how i feel and we we're going to go from there but I realized I didn't really know what a good 10K was supposed to feel like. Most races that I run, unless I'm pacing somebody, I want to give it my best effort that I have for the day. What am I capable of running on the day? If everything goes well, that's what I want to run. But I didn't know what I was capable of in a 10K, and I didn't really know how that should feel. Most of my training, most of my races have always been focused on longer distances. So if you were to ask me what does a marathon feel like, I'd be able to tell you what a good marathon pace feels like to me when I get in that groove. But for something like a 10K, that's a whole lot harder for me to feel out. So I didn't, I didn't really know where I should be. I didn't have any plan in terms of heart rate, in terms of just perceived effort. I was just kind of throwing it out there. And that was definitely some of my inexperience rearing its ugly head. So at the start of this race, it was still a, a little bit of a... A little bit of a question mark what what I should probably run. All right, so probably the most important part, but probably the piece that I'm going to skip through the quickest is the actual race itself because it was a little bit uneventful. Now, kilometer one, we did start out pretty slow. And if I'm going to be honest with you, I think I had mentioned to a couple of people after the race that I probably would have picked up the pace early on. 
but I couldn't really do that because there were so many people around me. It was probably a good thing if I'm entirely honest. I didn't blow up early on because I did kind of have to go at the pace of the people around me. And it, it was also this, this idea that I didn't really know exactly what a good pace for me was. So the fact that I was able to be a little bit patient, I didn't have a certain pace stuck in my head. I had a good idea, but I didn't know for sure, really helped me sort of ease into the race and really set a good pace that, that I could ultimately negative split my way through the 10K. Uh, kilometers two, three, and four still were fairly tight. There were a lot of people around, so you kind of were at the mercy of the people around you. I didn't want to waste a whole lot of extra energy trying to get around people. Whenever I had somebody kind of push past me, if I felt like I could stick with them, I kind of tailed behind them and weave through a few people, but I didn't make a whole lot of effort to actually just push through people again. The inexperience may be rearing its ugly head, but I felt like it still didn't make sense for me to do that. Now, kilometer five, Kilometer five, and perhaps this is this is me showing that I was actually putting a good, a good effort. Kilometer five was actually the only time during the race that I talked to the camera. And I think I said something at that point where my heart rate, I was feeling like I was getting a little bit high. I'm just going off the Forerunner 265, no heart rate strap, but I felt like all my stats were telling me that, uh, that I was leaning in the direction of blowing up. So I had to be a little bit cautious. If I'm being honest, heart rate's probably that high. But pace feels pretty good. So we're gonna keep going. But it was feeling pretty good. And I just wanted to keep it there and keep at that pace and hold that for a few more kilometers. And that's exactly what I did. Kilometers six, seven, eight. I really didn't feel like I needed to pick up a pace a whole lot. It did start to open up a bit. So I think if you look at my splits, uh, naturally I did pick up the pace a little bit and I was able to pass a number of different people. I didn't take on any water at the water stations, as I mentioned earlier, even though it was a fairly warm day, didn't feel like I needed to do that during the 10K. It really wasn't affecting me that much. So I was feeling like I was starting to open up and really kind of get in the groove in those later kilometers. Nine and 10. Now towards the end of this race, they had this thing over the top where, where it looked like the finish line or it looked like you were really really close and you were actually quite a ways out and I remember turning this corner and seeing that and hearing the announcers and just thinking I just got to push to that point so I really started to pick up the pace and I pushed to that point but when I got to that point I realized I was still quite a ways from the finish line and I thought to myself oh no we've burned our last match we're not going to have enough left in the tank to get there and it turns out I had even more in the tank so Really race day is something different than training and it, it got me excited. It got me excited and I was going to mention this at the end of the video, but I don't think this is going to be my last, I know it's not going to be my last 10 K that I try to run hard because I think with a training block, focusing on some pace, focusing on some speed, focusing on what it feels like to run a hard five or 10 K, I think I can really bring that number down. So I'm, I'm excited to try it again. I had a lot of fun running this race, but, but to end the race, I crossed the finish line. I felt like I put in a good effort. It does look like I negative split. Now you are in London, so GPS is not going to be a hundred percent. So whether the splits are completely accurate, I don't really know. I think I ended up around a thousandth place out of about 12,000 males that were actually in the race. So pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with the results that I had on the day, given given all the excuses that I gave you earlier in this video. After the race, and probably, I'm gonna be honest with you, the highlight of the entire race for me was I got the chance to meet and sit down and chat with for, for a good half an hour with the Forest of Dean runner, Andy, and such a great guy. Gave me, gave me lots of tips, gave me lots of ideas around YouTube and around running, and just, just had me feeling like I, I belong uh, in this space, both YouTube and in running. And that just just reaffirmed me how, how nice the running community and the running YouTube community actually can be. So incredibly, incredibly happy with how this whole weekend turned out. Do I think there are things I could have done to run it a little bit faster? Yes. Am I fairly surprised that given all the things that I did leading up to this racing and given how I felt race morning that I was actually able to get a PR? Yes, great run guys, great race. So happy to do it. If you haven't run the London 10K before, 
consider it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you think you got value out of this video, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button down below and comment on this video. What's the favorite distance that you've ever run? And has there been a distance that you entered, that you ran, that you surprised yourself and just how much you liked it? Because that turned out with this race. Guys, that's it for this video. I know it was a little bit of rambling on. I know it was a little bit different, but I just wanted to share my thoughts with you on this race. And this has been sort of my recap of how not to PR the Socking London 10K, which eventually led to a PR in the Sockney London 10K. My name is Matt and this is What Matters to Matt and ultimately what matters to me most is my family. I'll see you guys in the next video. Step one, wake up brother gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.